Hello all, happy Friday. My name is Jake Fanning and I am the social community coordinator here at PicMonkey. Today we're bringing you another Let's Chat webinar, this time with former elementary school teacher and CEO of Momtography and Teentography, Beryl Young. Hi Beryl. Hey Jake, how's it going? Not too bad, how about yourself? I am doing well today. Good to hear, good to hear. So I'm so glad to have you here with us today. And I'm really excited to talk about the subject of today's webinar, which is pivoting your business in the time of COVID. And just a note for everybody, we will take any questions that you have for Beryl at the end of the webinar. So please feel free to go ahead and ask them now and we'll get to them at the end. Uh, but before we get into all of that, can I have you give us a little background on yourself, how you guys got started and tell us a bit about momtography and what teentography are and how you guys got started with that as well. Sure. So uh, hopefully I can do this in the short window. <laughs> uh, but you started off great by just like telling everybody my background is in education, elementary education. And I was never really that person that carried a camera around wherever mm -hmm. I went. I kind of fell into photography unexpectedly. Um, and I'll share a little bit about that in just a minute. But yeah, um, momtography and teentography now today are we're a photography education community uh primarily focused on families as a whole uh with the number one goal of helping them unlock and unleash their creativity and really like use the camera to find creativity and joy and gratitude in every day um which is really kind of my path to finding uh photography myself Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I shared that I was uh, an elementary school teacher for 10 years in public education. I taught kindergarten, first grade, and then I was a technology integration specialist for seven years, kind of helping okay. teachers do creative things in the classroom, essentially. Yeah. Um, and I, like, I loved art and creativity and taking pictures. Mm -hmm. um, and like wedding photography when I got married it was really, really important to me. <laughs> yeah. And then I realized on a teacher salary, I was not going to be able to afford a professional wedding photo oh, yeah. uh, when we got pregnant for the first time. And we actually lost our first oh, pregnancy. I'm so sorry. Um, when I was 20 weeks pregnant, it was back in 2009. So um, a while, a while ago, but mm -hmm. that like, that is kind of the origin story of the entire business because I yeah. had accidentally fell into using a camera to heal, to grieve, mm -hmm. and then that sort of blossomed into what else can I do with the camera and fell into education first locally and now um, online and in lots of different ways. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love that. I like that, you know, kind of using using that moment to Really, I mean, give back. I mean, yes, it's a business, but you're also still giving back and giving skills to um, a lot of people and now teens, especially, which we'll get into, um, mm -hmm. which I think is, is is super rewarding. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Like, I, I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. So kind of pivoting back to the pivot here. Um, mm -hmm. I know back in January, uh, Momtography had at least a good idea of a business strategy for the year with in-person events and classes, but then COVID hit. And as you know, is common with small businesses, even without COVID, you know, going around, um, plans have to change and your team had to adapt and pivot rather quickly. Can you give me a little background on that process and what kind of the story was behind that pivot? Yeah, um, I'm so like appreciative of you all inviting me in to share this story today. And I went Absolutely. ahead and turned, yeah, I went ahead and turned off my camera because I have um, yeah. some slides to share just around um, our pivot and kind of what mm -hmm. happened. Because as I kind of uh, shared, like I started momtography with the goal of supporting moms through yeah. their grief, through difficult times, through all the emotional ups and downs and roller coasters that have been. <laughs> Uh, through motherhood and really found my own confidence and joy again through that process. And 
um, kind of grew this little fledgling like local classes here and there into, oh my gosh, this is like a full-time thing that we can do online. And that was going really, really great. And we had built this whole suite of courses and programming around uh, using a camera and around simple ways to do photo editing. I think I should, I, we've been pick monkey followers <laughs> and fans since the beginning, our first editing yeah. class. I was like, what's an easy editing software that parents can use? And stumbled upon pick monkey, which uh, has been incredible. And uh, 2020 was supposed to be the year that we kind of took all of that education we had built mm -hmm. and like came back to our roots because I personally was still doing local classes here and there. Yeah. We have seven licensed instructors who have learned our methodology, who have our curriculum, who were offering local in-person classes uh, in their regions and local areas. But um, I absolutely love the in-person, like let's get moms together and oh, yeah. really help them do something creative that doesn't take a lot of time out of their day. So we were like, let's build a community, let's build a club and build this network of in-person gatherings for moms. And we did a pilot meeting about a year ago and it was so well received and we were gung-ho going into 2020 mm. saying, hey, we're gonna build this network of clubs. And then, as everybody knows, <laughs> COVID <laughs> happened. And uh, we really like had to stop everything we were doing and reflect and go, okay, what next? And um, funny enough, like the day before um, the world shut down essentially, or the day before our schools decided that we weren't gonna be um, sending our kids to school anymore, I had attended a local school event, a fine arts event. And um, it was a middle school event and we were sharing and thinking about doing just like a local six week, like let's test out some like uh, photography classes for kids and teens. But this yeah. was not part of our business plan for 2020. Um, <laughs> I had stumbled into, I'm, I'm also in my like spare time, <laughs> mm -hmm. the, uh, <laughs> co-leader for my daughter's Girl Scout troop. So I have a um, almost 10 year old now and kind of like looked at all these breadcrumbs of, okay, well we did a photography meeting for Girl Scouts. I mm -hmm. used to be an elementary school teacher. We were gonna do these in-person classes just to test the waters with kids and teens. Yeah. And I went, I wonder, like parents just need a break right now, especially oh, working yeah. parents. It's like, I wonder if we could offer something virtual to teens. Mm -hmm. And that is the pivot that we did that surprisingly uh, had um, legs. And it's yeah. been amazing to explore. Yeah. Oh, no, I have to say that I don't personally have kids, but I have nephews. And, you know, I, I genuinely, genuinely appreciate that there's a program out there like this for kids now that gives them a creative outlet. Um, and also kind of gives parents a break, but it's an educational break, you know, they're, they're actually learning something and it's also a really good creative outlet. Um, you know, I know for like my nephews, they're stuck at home, you know, they can go do stuff outside, but you know, my, my brother and his wife are trying to, you know, still work and get their jobs done, um, and finding something that's educational for their kids to do. So they're learning and they're not just like sitting in front of a TV after, you know, doing some classes. I think is super important and I'm, I'm super impressed and really happy that there is a program out there like this. So really awesome. Yeah. It's been so, a bright spot yeah. for our entire team too. And it gave mm -hmm. me like, I am a mom of a preteen. So I was like, oh, this is something we can do together and create. So yeah. she's not just on a device exactly. <laughs> all day long. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Um, so I'm super curious around this time, like when you really realized you're going to have to, you and the team are going to have to pivot. What was going through your head? Um, there was a lot <laughs> going through <laughs> our head. Oh, I shared also, we have all these licensed instructors and, yeah. you know, the other thing that's kind of come out of this is that our licensed instructors, they were all doing local in-person curriculum. So we've also you know, layering, layering in the teen content along with mm. our mom content. 
we've also been giving them opportunities to teach virtually as well. So, you know, that sort of adds into the like layers upon layers of yeah. what was going on through my head. It was how are we still going to give opportunities to our teaching team? Um, you know, we we kind of just intuitively knew that mm -hmm. moms investing in themselves right now was going to be a little bit of a difficult ask, even though they needed the yeah. self care also. Oh yeah. Um, so our team met, and we came back to our core brand values: creativity, community, curiosity, and confidence. And I was like, well, teen programming fits into those brand values. Like this isn't pulling yeah. us away from what our brand already does. And so, you know, we did a little bit of market research. And yeah. It was more me being a mom <laughs> polling my friends. That was the level of market research we did. Hey. A, a Facebook post I did in early March, would any of my parent friends be interested in a virtual photography class for their kids and teens? And as mm -hmm. you can see, like 104 <laughs> comments, People were sharing it. They were like, ooh, tell me more. I want to know what this is. Yeah. And our team hadn't come up with a program <laughs> at that point. So, but you kind of go with what your yeah. people are telling you that they exactly. want. Yeah. You and have so, to adapt like that. And really, like, listening is, is super important. And I, I like that that was, you know, the bulk of your market, market research was listening to the people around you, the people that were working with you and just kind of moms in general and just kind of figuring out exactly yep. where you guys needed to go next. Yeah, and we have a small team at Momtography, but we're all a team of women and moms as well. So um, we all needed to kind of pivot and be creative and be flexible. Yeah. And so the team was willing to kind of go, okay, let's go all in with this and see what happens. And <laughs> This other post after we decided it was a go, mm -hmm. and I said, this little idea from 10 days ago is actually happening. And I was like, really, did oh, that wow. actually happen in 10 days? I guess <laughs> it did. <laughs> um, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, and our first class at the time of that post had 52 families signed up. I believe we ended up oh, wow. at 89 families that signed oh, up wow. for that first virtual class. So that's we kind of, yeah, built the plane while we were flying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like, you know, I have a, I have a family or a background in my family of small businesses of a small business. And I, you know, I really, I feel like that is the majority is just like learning to adapt and kind of going as you go, just building, like you said, building the plane as you're flying it and just figuring out what works and going with that and, you know, shedding stuff that doesn't work and kind of just going from there. So, so it can be a really, really terrifying, but rewarding process. Yeah, it's been it's been fascinating. And even for like myself and our team, it was like, oh, these kids and these teens are the bright spot right now. For yeah. us. Like we're still finding joy in our work from doing this. But it was definitely like it was a little bit of a sprint to get things oh, yeah. going. Absolutely. No, I, I, I can't even imagine like. Um, and so now that you've kind of got a business plan going, you have found the market you want to pivot to. Um, I can imagine that you would have had all of your marketing and promotional and branding materials for momtography events kind of all set up and ready to go with your previous model. Um, can you walk me through the process that you and your team went through to kind of rebuild your branding and marketing? And did you guys have to do it from scratch? And what all did you guys end up having to build out? So, yeah, interesting. Like, this is a good segue into like, how we were <laughs> able to really leverage Pick monkey to support us here because one of our team members does have a background in design. Um, so she, you know, when we needed collateral, whether it be for Facebook ads or for a quick post that we were doing, she would create a lot of that for us and it would just end up <laughs> uh, in the hands of our team for us to use. Yeah. But being that her background is in design, she would use design-based software that the rest of our team didn't necessarily use. Um, and so, you know, I've been a PicMonkey user for years, and I knew mm -hmm. that our designer would get the ball rolling with some of yeah. this team content for us, but then the rest of our team was going to need to use it. Our licensed yeah. teachers may need to use it at some point. Mm -hmm. So um, 
we started out by just putting everything into the PicMonkey brand kit. And we also realized like Montography, we had our logo, we had our visual, we had our fonts, we had our colors yeah. already dialed in. But, and like our, our brand, obviously you saw it in my hair at the beginning <laughs> of the <laughs> broadcast. Like we're a colorful, bright, positive yeah. brand to begin with. But we wanted to bring that out even more with the team content. So we used the same font bases, we used the same logo because it mm -hmm. was all photography based, but we just sort of added in some punchier colors like the lime green and the yellow and the pink and the purple to really yeah. kind of boost that brand presence so that teens and kids would be inspired by it. Um, so that was really, really helpful to be able to just kind of use the brand kit, have it all in here, and mm -hmm. then be able to share that out with the people on our team that needed access to it quickly. Um, then the second thing was kind of the social graphics. Uh, our designer, like I said, she created some of the initial graphics just so mm -hmm. we could get it up in that 10 days and start to yeah. get it rolling. Uh, but now that we're bringing um, our teaching team into being able to offer, offer these programs, mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to bring the graphics into PicMonkey. Um, and I'll share a little bit more, like we're using the hub in a really awesome way now too. Yeah. But the first step was to kind of recreate <laughs> what our designer <laughs> had made yeah. using the templates that PicMonkey offers. So uh, we were able to bring these in, kind of create, tweak the design, find fonts that would work. Um, and then the other thing that we realized, being that I'm a Girl Scout troop leader, <laughs> and the only photos I had on hand were, thankfully I had some of my own photos, were from that yeah. Girl Scout meeting that I did. But it was all photos of girls. And we knew that teen photography programming was not just for mm -hmm. girls. Yeah. So um, PicMonkey has their stock image library. And so that really allowed us to go, okay, can we get some graphics, some images going mm -hmm. on our website in these uh, social posts that was kind of all inclusive yeah. <laughs> and um, allowed us to have a much more um, inclusive look and feel to um, the entirety of this programming. So we changed up the colors here. We have a boy with a camera instead of a girl with a camera. Um, and this has been a really quick way for us to get those until it's safe to go interact and meet with our students and yeah. get photos of them ourselves. Exactly. No, I love that. Yeah. Awesome. And then the last piece, like I said, we're putting all of this into shared hub boat folders. So most of our graphics right now are square based for Instagram, mm -hmm. for Facebook, um, but we're, starting to roll these shared folders out to our licensed teaching team. So if awesome. they have their own images, they can change it. If they need to edit the text and update dates or what they're doing, um, they have all the branding and collateral there. So there's that consistent look and feel, uh, but they can essentially make it their own as well. Awesome. Yeah, no, the shared folders are super helpful for that because I mean, you guys can have your own templates and just let them kind of go and it gives them a lot of autonomy while also keeping your brand pretty or pretty uh, consistent all around. So awesome. Totally. Yeah. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about, I know you had said that you were already planning to do some kind of like hybrid online in-person model. Um, but can you walk me through a little bit of the process for moving completely online and tell us how that's gone so far and uh, any platforms that you guys have used and how you guys set those up? Totally. Um, yeah, we actually faced some unique challenges with mm -hmm. um, the teen programming because photography is such a like shareable thing and yeah. we use social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube to share visuals. But a lot of kids and that like we were marketing teen photography for ages nine to 15. That was like the independent age that we felt like could mm -hmm. utilize uh, that content. Yeah. And we wanted to have a safe, like social sharing network for them. And um, we had turned to Mighty Networks earlier mm -hmm. on in 2020 
to house the virtual side of Montography Club. Like what we were doing to build these in-person clubs, we were also kind of, like you were saying, hybridizing, if that's yeah. the word, um, <laughs> a virtual experience for them as well to share in between club meetings. So we were like, I wonder if we can use Mighty Networks. Will it be safe enough? Um, and we did find a way because we knew that parents probably weren't going to put their 10 year old on mm -hmm. Facebook or Instagram to share. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and we want, but we wanted them to be able to, in this time, like meet kids from all over the globe and chat with them and share pictures. So, you know, we got really, really careful and creative with how we were communicating with parents about using this social network. Um, but we did find that Mighty Networks worked beautifully for us to help awesome. parents kind of set up that safe space for their yeah. teens. So that was one tool that we mm -hmm. used to support the kind of bringing teens, especially online. Yeah. Um, but then the other tool that we found that has worked beautifully for us this year has been a tool called Notion. Okay. Um, they're a project management tool. They're like Asana or Trello or yeah, um, yeah. and yeah, any of those, but it's very visual. And so, you know, as our team was kind of communicating about what we needed in that 10 day time frame from like sales copy to images, um, we were also putting all that content into Notion and yes. now we can get back to it, use it. We have SOPs for our team. Um, so Notion has been another really helpful time management tool for us. Yeah, and it's, I, as a creative myself, and a lot of folks at PicMonkey are creatives, you know, I, I totally understand having to have a tool to keep, you know, I mean, anybody, even not a creative, but especially creatives, keeping us focused and keeping us goal oriented and, you know, getting things to just like click off, I, I think is super important. So I'm glad you guys found a really visual way to do that and a program that really kind of suited your needs for that. I think that's wonderful. Totally. Yeah. So our last little thing before we go and to, before we take questions, um, I kind of wanted to talk about, like I said, I have a little bit of a background um, with my family running a small business for many years. Uh, I watched my parents, you know, struggle and sacrifice. They really love what they did. Uh, I love what they built, but I kind of wanted to have you talk about um, especially with this pivot, you know, uh, what were the struggles for you and your team? You know, what were the pitfalls uh, for your overall process? And just, you know, what helped you and your team get through these struggles and some of the more like struggling and darker days of going through all of this? Totally. So here's the first photo <laughs> that I want to <laughs> share with the struggle. This is actually like it's a day in March or April, the first day that we had to attempt digital learning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my, I said to my daughter, are we gonna uh, have a uniform for stay at home school? And she said, onesies are our uniform. And I was like, all right, <laughs> we'll, wear, we'll wear onesies for, uh, for digital school. That lasted one day. Um, That's so cute. <laughs> but the first struggle has really been like balancing being a mom yeah. and wrestling with making this very abnormal time mm -hmm. a little bit more normal and making sure that she has the supports that she needs. Um, and also being a CEO, having to yeah. clock in to work, having to keep um, the lights on, so to speak, even though it's a digital <laughs> business um, and having this pivot that went, you know, better than we ever imagined. Mm -hmm. So, you know, tr just trying to, balance the when can we have team meetings when do I need to be there for my daughter uh, all of that mental load mental strain that's not yeah. fun to moms to begin with has just been kind of amplified during this time so that's been a little bit of a challenge in a struggle yeah. no I can totally um, understand yeah and then you know the other I guess good problem is that you know we are growing we've expanded our product offerings and going back to kind of the origin story i built this business mm -hmm. on my own on the fringes kind of fell into this by accident so to speak mm -hmm. and now the the vision the brand it's grown grown beyond what i can do as a solopreneur oh yeah but also 
balancing growing a team and really watching uh, the numbers and what's working and what's not working and getting uh, more bodies onto our team and having them uh, work together kind of seamlessly. Mm -hmm. um, running a team is difficult no matter how you do it, but a virtual team can come with its own set of challenges too. Because oh, yeah. everybody's kind of, yeah, I mean, I'm sure PicMonkey yep. <laughs> has learned that over the last several months too. And just figuring out like different schedules and what do uh, the different team members need to be able to communicate effectively and mm -hmm. get their jobs done uh, quickly and effectively. So that's been the other struggle is um, how fast or how slow to grow and also uh, just the management of everybody's roles and responsibilities. Oh yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's all been, it's all been a lot kind of at once, but I really, I find it remarkable that you, you and your team were really able to get all of this done in a really quick manner and create a really wonderful program that, like I said earlier, I think is, is super important just for, you know, parents' mental health, kids' mental health, giving them a creative outlet, I, I think is just, like I said, it is super important and really, really wonderful. And I, I appreciate what you guys are doing. I really do. Yeah, thanks. Of course. Um, so let's see now if we've got any questions. It looks like we have one um, is asking, um, did you guys, uh, or were you self-taught with camera or did you take classes? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so I, really started out as self-taught. Um, yeah. Back in, I always say like 2009, 2010 was like the golden age of <laughs> DSLR photography. That was when like yeah. every consumer was out there buying a DSLR camera. Yes. Um, and there really wasn't a lot for like moms mm -hmm. back then to learn. There was a lot of professional speak. Um, yeah. And since my background was in technology education, I, you know, I did mm -hmm. a little bit of learning just through forums and gosh, there weren't even really YouTube videos that I watched back then, <laughs> but it was practicing yeah. and getting out there and taking pictures and blogging. Like that was really, I started a personal blog to just okay. practice and share what I was doing. Um, it wasn't until other friends, people that were reading the blog started commenting on the photos and asked mm -hmm. if I had um, a photography business. I had a very short stint as a professional photographer um, okay. that I went to a couple of workshops to learn and hone my craft. Yeah. Um, but most of it has been self-taught. Awesome. That's really awesome. Like taking the initiative to learn a skill like that. I mean, I think a lot of folks like myself who are very fortunate enough to be working right now and be able to work from home and do their job from home, we're finding, you know, more time to you know, develop skills. So you know, I can tell you it's tough to do on your own. So I give you a lot of credit for being able to really pick that up on your own and, and run with it. So that's awesome. Yeah. And we do have another question. Um, so this will be, yes, we will be recording this um, and we will send a uh, video link out to you guys um, by email. And we'll also be posting this to PicMonkey's um, YouTube channel. So we will if you if you came in late no worries you'll get to see the whole thing again um and then so let's see uh so we do have one question that i think we kind of answer a little bit but i'll just i'll throw it out there again um mm -hmm. it's where are your in-person clubs located and how do people start a club in your in their area great question so this is a good segue to the slide that we're on. <laughs> uh, right now, gosh, let's see if I can remember off the top of my head. I am based uh, in the Washington DC suburbs. So I'm in Northern Virginia. There are two clubs here. We have one that meets at photography headquarters, um, which is my house. <laughs> and we have one that meets nearby here. We have clubs in California, uh, the Bay Area, or no, sorry, Sacramento and uh, Laguna Hills. We have a club in the Detroit, Michigan suburbs. Um, those are the ones that are like popping top of mind right now. Again, yeah. we did not get to build out as far as we wanted to. Exactly. <laughs> and to do that exactly. in 20 for in person, but we do have a virtual club. Um, and uh, momtography.club is the best place to get all of that information. All of our okay. licensed instructors, the club um, is on our about page. We kind of have a, have a map 
with all the locations. And um, there's details on there for getting in touch about becoming a potential club leader or licensed teacher as well. Awesome. Yeah. And thank you for the question. That was a perfect segue because that was going to be my next thing is kind of tell us a little more how you can find out. So um, that is perfect. And it looks like we don't have any more questions. So I think that is going to be a wrap for us today. So Beryl, thank you so much for taking the time for all of this and kind of walking us through um, whether you are looking to start a small business or you have a small business, or you're looking to pivot. I think this is super helpful. Or if you're looking to just get involved in photography, I think this is incredibly, incredibly helpful. Um, and I really appreciate your time, Beryl. Um, and to everyone else who joined, thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope you have a wonderful Friday and wonderful weekend. So thanks so much, Beryl. Have a wonderful thanks, day. Guys. Yeah, thank Bye, you. Guys. Yeah.